This week on Outdoor Oklahoma, we're bass fishing out of kayaks on Claremore City Lake. Then it's a look at two efforts the wildlife department's involved in to connect kids to our outdoor heritage. From the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Everyone would have to agree that the future of our outdoor recreation sports depends on us passing down our heritage to the next generation. Today, we're going to look at two different efforts that the wildlife department's involved in that are making great strides in this area. But first, we've got a fun story featuring a unique fishing club, the Northeast Oklahoma Kayak Anglers. Today we caught up with them on Claremore City Lake as they were hosting a fun Saturday bass fishing tournament. hasn't fished one of our kayak fishing tournaments before. Okay. We've got quite a few new people. Well, this is a catch photo release tournament for black bass, so largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. If, it's, if you've got a question about it, just take a picture of it on your board and we'll sort it out later. Time you got, David. Okay. Because I forgot to tell you guys about the uh, the, the scorecard. Some of you guys that have, for the first time that you guys are fishing today, uh, just write down how many about how many pictures you take of each fish, and then about how long the fish was, and make sure you put your names on your scorecards. Um, I'll see you guys back here just before noon, and make sure you got your life jackets on the whole time today. Begin. I got the boat, it'll be a year, or it was a year in May, uh, and uh, I've done you know more just kayaking than what I have uh, fishing off of it. Uh, the fishing that we've been doing mostly up until this point with the kids growing up was trout fishing. And uh, I had kind of got the boat, the kayak, to fish over on this one stream over in Missouri there at Taney Como. Uh, it seemed like that a lot of the fishing, better fishing, was going to be done from the boat. I didn't want to have to get a rent a boat every time we went over there. Uh, so the kayak seemed to be the way to go. They each have their own advantage. Uh, this one being more lightweight and uh, easier to transport. Uh, a lot of times it, it gets pretty cramped sitting inside here. Uh, the kayaks that you sit on top of, those guys can throw their legs over the side and turn sideways. 
seems like they do pretty good in it, but this kayak, the sit-in sit -in kayaks are usually cheaper than what the sit-on-top kayaks are. This is actually the first tournament that I fished <clears throat> uh, with the kayak club. Uh, and since it was here close to home, I thought it would be a good chance to get started and uh, see what it was like and see how I could do. I know a lot of these other guys, I follow their posts all the time on uh, Facebook page and they all do really well a lot of times. And I just wanted to get out and kind of have some fun and see if I could catch anything up here. It's simple. I don't always have to uh, hook up to the boat and tow it to the lake, throw them in, throw it in the back of the truck, take it to work, after work. It's real easy to just to uh, go out somewhere and throw the yak in the water and uh, do a little fishing. It's great, it's fun, it's good exercise too. So, you know, you're not always just sitting in the boat or standing in the boat. Um, get a little paddling, get a little workout. Well, I got into it after I went to California one time, I was out on a business trip and I was on the Russian River and I rented a kayak there and this was about 12 to 15 years ago, it was quite a while. And um, I floated down the river and caught a couple of fish and I told my wife, uh, as soon as I get home I'm buying a kayak. This is one of those kayaks with the pedals on it, uh, so you can pretty much have your hands free for fly fishing. And it works the same way on the river, except uh, uh, it, you have to watch those, those pedals on the bottom that you don't get them too, too shallow. But uh, they, they work out really well. I just love uh, uh, fly fishing from my kayak. Kayak fishing uses a catch photo release system. And instead of holding your fish in a tank, you don't really have a big, um, live well you can keep your fish in so we when you catch your fish you just pull it up and you take a measuring board and you have your your digital camera and you take a picture of it and we meet back at the end of the day and everybody collects their or I collect all the SD cards and get everybody's picture on one computer and we judge the pictures and see how long their fish were and whoever has the longest total length between five fish wins uh, the catch photo release system is really uh, it's it's good it's a little better more healthy for the fish they're not out of the water as long it's not as stressful for them so you catch the fish, you may have it maybe a minute or two tops, and then it's back in the water swimming again. And I was bumping those rip, those big boulders with that deep diving rogue out there and hung this nice one. So I'm going to get a picture of him real quick. You can have about anything you want on a, on a kayak that you can have on a bass boat, except maybe more than two people. Um, This is the biggest one I think I've caught in one of these tournaments. Uh, get a couple of pictures here so I can make sure that I get everything right. You have to get the identifier, the little scorecard in the picture too. So if I do all that, and I went ahead and put a stringer on him because I didn't want him jumping out of the boat. <laughs> but uh, I found that, that riprap with that graph and then I went back to working it first time I went down the dam I had medium diving crankbaits next time I thought I'd, I'd go a little bit deeper and sure enough it worked because this one was out just a little bit deeper I had bumped one of those big rocks with that rogue and when I stopped and let it drift up and started moving again he hammered it I'm gonna guess he's pretty close to about five pounds just guessing yeah he may be a little bit less than that. I've got a little cheap set of scales somewhere in the boat. But I don't have the fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way that goes. <laughs> Thank you.
Everybody up here? All righty. Scott, you got third place with, um, let's see, 28 and three quarter inches. And third place, you got 30 bucks. Sean, you got um, 150 bucks for first place and then $80 for big fish. Let me dig all this cash out of here. And then Danny, you were second by 10 inches. Uh, big fish was 21 and three quarters, and then uh, Danny had the second biggest fish with 19 and three quarters. And Danny, you got $100 for second place. Not too bad. Congratulations. And then uh, we've got a, a pile of prizes here stacked in the kayak for everybody. Got some stuff from Hook One, some stuff from Yak Attack, some stuff from Mustad, and some stuff from OKC Kayak. Well, what a great bunch of guys. For more information on the Northeast Oklahoma kayak anglers, look them up on Facebook. When we come back, we'll take a look at two different programs the department's involved in that are making great strides to pique kids' interests in outdoor recreation, right after this week's Outdoor News Report. Well, I'm here at the Oklahoma National Archery in the School State Tournament, and if this looks like it's a big deal, well, it's because it is. These are all the best of the best archers in our state, all competing for top honors today. Let's go check out what all the excitement's about, shall we? Some of the more advanced groups are starting the first day of school. They're shooting during school and they'll have after school programs as well and they'll shoot all the way continuously until our first regional shoots and they continue to practice until they reach the state shoot. behind us here today is the scores for the state shoot and basically this gives people the opportunity to kind of check out what they how they did today uh, once the flight ends or our flight ends basically all the scorecards come into us and we calculate the scores and then we print out these reports which get posted here up on the wall locally for everybody to see uh, people can also check out the scores uh, the top scores on our Facebook page and we post them this year it's the first time we're actually been posting them live on our website at the same time uh, it also gives coaches the opportunity uh, to come over here and check to see how their students did they really enjoy it. I enjoy coaching it. It's fun to see kids that aren't necessarily athletes or don't get to play other sports come in and succeed at something other than just regular sports. This is a great sport where we can combine the team effort where everybody puts together, has a score, to try to accomplish the goal as a team, but an individual can set themselves apart by shooting well and then we have that opportunity for them to, to rise above on an individual basis too. And I thought it'd just be something different and then I ended up enjoying it and liking it and having fun with it. So this is just another sport for me to do because I'm not into the sports like running and stuff. I like you know, staying focused and doing my best and aiming and hitting it right in the center. Outdoor education school days are a great way to introduce kids to the natural world around them. And one of the best ones around is the Okmogee County Conservation District's Natural Resource Day.
in Okmulgee County, we attempt to get every fifth grader in the county through the outdoor classroom. You really need to be outside and you need to really expose the kids to this stuff firsthand. I think at this level, at, at the fifth grade level, these kids are always excited. Even if, even if they've never been exposed to the outdoor things we do here today, whether it be the reptiles, whether it be fishing. A lot of these kids that we have out here today, even though they're in a small town like Okmulgee, have never had a fish on the end of a fishing rod before. These kids come out, catch these fish, in the classroom, you know, they get to look at the pictures and stuff, but they don't, they don't get that tactile sensation. Here, they get to touch them, they get to see how they react to their touch. They get to learn that fishing is not all just catching. They get to touch worms. They get to watch their bobbers, learn patience. They, they really have a blast. Well, many years ago, I found out real quick that if you wanted to catch the attention of fifth graders, it helps to have live critter. I like to bring a variety of stuff. If, if I can bring something with a real unique twist to it, today we've got some narrow mouth toads and tarantulas, which are something that kids rarely see, even though they're, they're quite abundant. Narrow mouth toad. While the tarantulas act as great bodyguards, and provide a beautiful home for the narrow mouth toad. The narrow mouth toad is a fantastic anteater. And, and tarantulas, as ferocious and big and menacing as they are, are not well equipped to deal with ants. Are, are the babies on land or in water? In water. For amphibians, they always lay their eggs in water or in a real wet environment, don't they? In the end, it's always nice to have at least one large snake to capture their attention before you go. I think learning outdoors um, as opposed to learning in the classroom is you know, hands-on. They can actually see, you know, see the environment. They could see a bee pollinating a flower. In the classroom, they're just listening to the teacher explain or try to teach them this. Outdoors, it's more hands-on. How many people did tell the snake for the first time? No, no, good deal. I think all the kids will leave with a better appreciation. Even if they're scared of snakes, even if they're scared of frogs, whatever it is, I think they'll leave with a lot more interest and, and a lot more excitement about reptiles and amphibians. The importance and benefits of these Natural Resource Days is to educate the youth of Oatmulgee County, uh, the importance of being environmentally aware, and the, to protect and restore their natural resources and the good use of those natural resources. We have a lot of uh, people that volunteer their time that come out to uh, help us put on these uh, natural resource days. Um, and it's, it's a good thing to educate the youth of Oatmulgee County. Well, I think the whole outdoor classroom concept in general is something that people really is, realize is invaluable to their kids. Um, you can't do this in the classroom putting on the natural resource days for a lot of years. Uh, we have seen fifth graders grow up and remember the natural resource day. And from my perspective, that makes putting these natural resource days all worthwhile to see them grow as students and become what they enjoy doing later in life. We feel like it really makes them a more well-rounded student and maybe have a better perspective on their environment you know, later in their life. They remember these days and remember what it's like and how to maybe teach other people uh, to be more environmentally aware. 
Hey, thanks for joining us today. And for a behind the scenes look at our show and our production crew, join our brand new Outdoor Oklahoma Facebook page. We'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.